The world is building state-of-the-art infrastructure at an incredible rate, and the rapidly growing construction industry around the world is highlighting incredible construction projects. Every year, the world's largest architectural projects are conceived, built and completed. What comes to mind when you think of the world's largest construction project? If you think about airports, canals and subways, you're on the right track. Of course, there are industrial parks and housing and communal services. However, some of the current projects on the list may surprise you, such as the International Space Station and the Orbital Ring. Mega projects, amazing architecture, amazing buildings. Whatever the name, this building project continues to set the standard for the next generation of high-end construction. All of these projects represent technological and architectural advances that continue to push the boundaries. Let us know about some of the mega projects that will amaze you. ITER ITER Originally, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, meaning ROAD or ROAD, is a major international nuclear fusion research and engineering project aimed at generating energy by replicating the fusion process of the Sun on Earth. Upon completion of the first main and plasma reactor, scheduled for late 2025, it will be the world's largest physically confined plasma experiment and the largest experimental tokamak nuclear fusion reactor. It's being built next to the Cadarache site in southern France. ITER will be the largest of the more than 100 fusion reactors built since the 1950s, with 10 times the volume of a tokamak plasmas in operation today. The ITER fusion reactor will consume over 300 megawatts of electrical power to cause the plasma to absorb 50 megawatts of thermal power, generating 500 megawatts of fusion heat over 400 to 600 seconds. This translates to a tenfold increase in plasma heating power measured in terms of heat input to the heat output. In 2021, the record for nuclear fusion power generator will be held by the National Ignition Facility Reactor, which reached Q.7 in August 2021. In addition to the plasma heating itself, the total power consumption of the reactor and equipment will vary from 110 megawatts to a peak of 620 megawatts over a 30 period. Seconds during plasma operation As a research reactor, the heat energy produced is not converted into electricity but is simply released. The vacuum vessel is the heart of the ITER machine, a double-walled steel vessel in which plasma is confined with the help of a magnetic field. The ITER vacuum vessels will be twice the size and 16 times heavier than previously produced fusion vessels. Each of the nine toroidal sectors will weigh about 500 tons for a total weight of 5,000 tons. Including all shields and harbor structures, this adds up to a total of 5,116 tons. The outside diameter will be 19.4 meters and the inside diameter will be 6.5 meters. Once assembled, the entire structure will be 11.3 meters high. The main function of the vacuum vessel is to provide a tightly sealed plasma vessel. Its main components are aircraft carriers, port structures, and support systems. The main vessel is a double-walled construction with poloidal and toroidal stiffeners between shells 60 mm thick to strengthen the ship's structure. These ribs also form channels for cooling water flow. The space between the double balls is filled with a shield construction made of stainless steel. The interior surface of the container serves as an interface to the breeding molecule which contains the parent blanket component. These modules are used to protect against high-energy neutrons generated by fusion reactions and some are also used for the concept of making tritium. This is a great project coming up, waiting eagerly for it. What are your opinions about such a great project? International Space Station The International Space Station ISS, supported by 16 nations, took 12 years to complete and has been inhabited since November 2000. A huge achievement by any measure, the station weighs a million pounds and is the most expensive structure ever built. That's the way it should be. Truly a jewel in the crown of human achievement, the ISS has become an operational outpost for the United States and its partners in some of the harshest environments ever known. The International Space Station is currently the largest in low Earth orbit. It's a multinational collaborative project which involves five space agencies – NASA, Roscosmos, JAXA, ESA and CSA. Ownership and use of space stations are governed by intergovernmental treaties and agreements. The station serves as a laboratory for the study of microgravity and the space environment, where scientific research is carried out in astrobiology, astronomy, meteorology, physics and other fields. The ISS is suitable for testing spacecraft systems and equipment needed for possible future long-range missions to the Moon and Mars. 
The ISS was originally intended to be a laboratory, observatory and factory, while providing transportation, maintenance and a low Earth orbit base for possible future missions to the Moon, Mars and asteroids. However, not all of these uses envisioned in the original MOU between NASA and Roscosmos were realized. The 2010 United States National Space Policy gave the ISS an additional role to serve commercial, diplomatic and educational purposes. The space station flies at an average height of 400 kilometers above Earth. It orbits the Earth every 90 minutes at a speed of about 28,000 kilometers per hour. In one day, the station covers the distance it takes to travel from Earth to the Moon and back. Rivaling the shimmering planet Venus for brightness, the space station appears as a bright moving light in the night sky. It can be seen from Earth without using a telescope by night observers who know where and when to look. Such a great achievement. I think with this project, you must be amused. Jeddah Tower The building is expected to be at least a thousand meters high, and the exact height is being kept under wraps during development, just like the Burj Khalifa. At around one kilometer tall, the Jeddah Tower will be the world's tallest building or structure to date, surpassing the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, by 180 meters. The 50 hectare site of Jeddah Tower, along with surrounding buildings, will be the first project in phase 3 of the Jeddah Economic City development. A three phase project is proposed for a large, undeveloped coastal area of 5.2 square kilometers. The area is located about 20 kilometers north of the port city of Jeddah. Designed by HOK Architects, Jeddah Economic City is valued at at least $20 billion and took about 10 years to build. The stability of such high rise buildings will create problems such as limited vertical vertical transportation since elevators can only travel the distance, swaying of the building by the wind, column relocation due to floor unevenness because concrete hydrates and tends to shrink under load while still retaining its dimensions. In addition, skyscrapers require very large core sizes to support the structure and accommodate a large number of required elevators. Core size is an important part of the lower middle class space. One way Jeddah Tower has tried to address this issue is by using a sleek, sloping exterior design. While this design is more expensive, it provides superior aerodynamic performance compared to stepped designs such as Burj Khalifa, making its core more conservative overall. In addition to its main function, the building will house several retail outlets and many other unique establishments that will function as an almost vertical concept, almost a standalone establishment city. The design of the building is simple and appropriate, but with bold, dazzling forms and high technology described by ASGG as an elegant, economical and constructive design. The estimated construction cost is $1.23 billion less than the Burj Khalifa, likely due to lower labor costs in the Middle East, especially Saudi Arabia, and reduced 24 hours, 3 shift operation, speed up process, global financial crisis. This project is not yet completed, but if it will be completed, it will be the world's tallest building standing. Let us know your opinion about this great mega project. Abraj Kudai Abraj Kudai is a hotel under construction in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. It was originally scheduled for 2017, but construction was halted in 2015 due to financial difficulties. In 2021, the hotel is not yet open to the public. When completed, it will be the largest hotel in the world with a ring of 12 towers and 45 floors, 10,000 rooms, 70 restaurants and 4 rooftop helipads. There will also be a fifth floor dedicated to the Saudi royal family. The project has an estimated cost of $3.5 billion and covers about 1.4 million square feet. London-based Arene Hospitality was responsible for the interior design of the hotel and the design of the rooms. Abraj Kudai is unprecedented in its scale and is a huge podium on which 12 towers from 30 to 48 floors will be built. The tower is used as a residential hotel and residential complex. The equipment is located in the basement of the podium and the podium itself has a bus stop, a shopping center, a restaurant, gastronomy, a conference center and a parking lot to ensure the maximum comfort of residents. In the center of the structure is a dome mounted on two towers. 
The dome houses a multi-purpose ballroom and conference center. With its unparalleled scale and height, exceptional location and location, and multifunctional identity, the building captures the attention of casual observers and sets a benchmark in Saudi Arabia and the Islamic versatility of its potential guests. So, if you want to visit Saudi Arabia, take a look at Abraj Kudai. You will be delighted. The Ministry of Finance of Saudi Arabia, the client of the Abraj Kudai project, is also a major customer of SBL, Saudi Bin Laden Group, one of the largest construction companies in Saudi Arabia. The government's actions had a direct impact on the SBL, which also suffered when low oil prices began putting pressure on the government to cancel or stop projects and delay payments. The situation escalated when one of SBL's cranes crashed into the Grand Mosque in Mecca, killing 107 people and preventing the company from winning new government contracts, according to Gulf Business. In response to a possible financial collapse, the conglomerate laid off thousands of employees and suspended work on several major projects, including Abraj Kudai. Orbital Ring The orbital ring is just a huge ring revolving around our planet. We learn that orbital rings are a prelude to the complete colonization of outer space, especially in the solar system. Currently, flying into space is very expensive. This is because current methods require the use of large, bulky rockets that use a lot of propellants to get anything into space. A 12-day stay in a space hotel could cost you $9.5 million by 2021. But with orbital rings, everything changes. If we had an orbital ring, we could send people into space for the price of a plane ticket. This will create a significant boom in the space tourism industry. How does it work? Well, the beauty of orbital rings is that you can create rings on almost any large object, including planets, moons, stars, and even black holes. For example, you can make these orbital rings around Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and the Sun. Another cool feature of the ring orbits is that you can build multiple rings side by side until they look like balls, but as scientist Paul Birch explains in his article, you can use these orbital rings to create spherical supports. Now you need to move the ring and the spherical surface away from the big body in the center. The Sun or Jupiter has the same gravity as the Earth. Remember that gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from a large object. The closer you will be to the object, the stronger will be the force of gravity. The farther, the weaker gravity. You can build cities and atmospheres. Through refineries and other methods, it is possible to completely remove the atmosphere from the giant gas. It turns out that the gas giants usually consist of two separate parts, an outer atmosphere of gas that covers most of the planets and the inner core of rocks. Gas giants can be roughly imagined as planets of stone, metal, and earth, surrounded by dense nebulae in a gaseous atmosphere. But with this gigantic gas processing plant, and perhaps some other method, the gaseous atmosphere could be stripped away, leaving only an Earth-like planet. In fact, with the right modifications, you can make it look like Earth. We also discussed the use of fusion candles to deliver these gas giants to their permanent habitable home zone. Alternatively, you can be in the Sun. Although not literally on the surface, exoplanets can be created around the Sun and live on the surface, using orbital rings to support a large spherical surface. If the project is confirmed, the space race will begin to create the first orbital rings, which can be built in 10 to 30 years. It's one of my favorite mega projects. I'd love to see this project getting completed in the future. In future, there are lots of mega projects coming up, and it's necessary too for the development of the country and increasing the economy of the country. The creation of these complex capital projects is not without challenges, and many risks make it difficult for project managers to meet deadlines and meet stakeholders' needs. The great is the project, the high is the risk. Let's look at some other problems which affect the mega projects. The environmental risks associated with infrastructure development projects are on the rise. Environmental risks can occur at different levels throughout the life cycle of a project, causing significant disruption at every stage. From environmental or public demonstrations before construction to contamination or exposure of pipes during construction, contamination during operation and maintenance after construction. Regulation is a growing feature of project management practice inside Europe and around the world. Implementing and maintaining compliance is the primary responsibility of the project manager, and non-compliance and non-compliance have serious consequences, including fines, legal penalties, and reputational damage. Many companies involved in the construction of mega-projects have a multi-level organizational structure. In a shared system, the contractor talks to the facility manager, then reports to the project owner's representative, then talks to the project sponsor, and then talks to the general manager. Because on large projects, multiple contractors handle their detailed planning, many dependencies create a complex communication situation. These futuristic mega-projects will change the world, but they should keep in mind that development should be done without harming our mother nature.
Thanks for staying till the end of this video, hope you liked it and let us know your thoughts on which projects you're excited about.